It's like, were you not part of the original Star Wars magic? Were you not there? Did you not know that you have to go away every couple of years and create a new script, mm -hmm. a new vision, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Did you not learn that from, from Lucas? You're watching clips, the best moments from our live streams every Monday and Friday. Don't miss out. Watch it. Camera Pasha's Patreon. Scoop. Mm -hmm. Lucasfilm yeah. slows film and TV production, but eyes video game for expansion. Yep. So, so thanks for bringing that. That's on that's on my Patreon. It goes out for for subscribers, and uh, this is one of the scoops I've got. We haven't had something in a couple of weeks, you know. Unlike a lot of people, I don't actually make up stuff. I wait until I hear information, and uh, and this was this came to me yesterday, uh, you know. And it actually came in response to some news that that we all know about, which is a few days ago, Disney announced that it's firing about three hundred people, oh. uh, you know, from legal, from HR, from a variety of areas, uh, you know. And that was a bit of a surprise for Hollywood. It caught a lot of stir in the industry. 300 is a lot of people to be letting go within a few days. Um, you know, people thought there there have been waves of uh, of layoffs in the past, uh, but that had they had been there had been warning for that. This sort of came out of quote unquote nowhere. At least the industry wasn't aware of it, and that suggests there's a lot of changes happening beneath the scenes. So you know, this came from my source inside of uh, Lucasfilm slash Disney, uh, sort of unbidden. They 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 reached out because you know they were sort of answering the unthought question in my mind is how is this affecting Lucasfilm and so they came in with two information so as of as of at least yesterday when they contacted me uh, there were no major layoffs at Lucasfilm we've had a few administrative people were let go so that seems to right. be part of the overarching 300 or so that have been let go in the Disney structure uh, but mm -hmm. the information they gave us is but the big issue is why are all these people being let go is because Disney is as I think many sources now confirm and I've been saying for a very long time is broke Right. And so they have to at some point, economics is gravity. At some point, you have to deal with it. You can jump out of a window, but at some point you have to deal with the ground, whether you like it or not, it's coming. Right. And so the ground is coming. And so they now need to start prioritizing things, you know, cutting costs and figuring out what they're going to do. And that's Disney throughout. That's also at Lucasfilm, which is I think anyone can agree, a very poorly managed studio creatively and financially for, for well over a decade. And so now they have to deal with the consequences of it. Uh, and so one of the bits of information that's very interesting is that because of the cost pressures, uh, Lucasfilm, which you know I can my sources say and I consistently hold, uh, that is actually being shadow run by John Favreau, right? He's not he doesn't have a title, but he's got he's the guy behind the throne with all the power, right? And he's had to figure out what do I do with the resources yep. that I'm being told is what we're going to have for the next five years. And so as a result, the the what uh, I've gotten is that uh, Favreau and his team are actually focusing on slowing down production in film and television. Right, I don't have quality, the details. not quantity. Quality, not quantity. Right, which I think mm -hmm. many people who have been upset about uh, the stuff that's been coming out of this studio for the last five years may agree with, or even if they sullenly want to. Oh, agree with. one hundred percent. We, me, and you have gone toe to toe on on you know these shows, but one thing is like you know there's just too many of them. There was too many. It's really slowed down. You know. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, and, go on, it, sir. it's going to accelerate now because they just don't have the resources. So they're going to focus on things that 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 at least Mr. Favreau in his vision for Star Wars, which I largely agree with, mm -hmm. believe is, is is with where the company should be moving forward. A few months before, back in April, I actually link it in this article here. I had uh, scooped something that so far hasn't gotten out in public, but uh, my sources within within Lucasfilm were saying that that Favreau is developing several new animated Star Wars shows that are going to be anime themed because he he's able to you know he's at least gauging the market of where young people are. My niece, you know, eighteen year old niece, she's an anime fan. I mean, this is the whole generation's anime is the future. Oh yeah. And he sees that, so he's like, this is the direction. And some of those Star Wars shorts and Vision, Star Wars Visions, people really like the Japanese-style stuff. And so he's like, he's, that's the direction he's going in. So he's going to focus on things that he thinks that the next generation of people uh, that will be fans will want. And I think that is a good thing. I think one, one can argue that because there were such strict release schedules under the Kathleen Kennedy regime, the prior regime, uh -huh. that – stuff needed to be put out whether it was ready or not that included book of boba fett which you know which i think was half baked i like some of it i didn't like a lot of it uh you know the fact that i like some of it upset people some of it was actually decent some was fun of some of it yeah. was really it was, it was very some bipolar it, let me yeah, read a little it didn't bit work at all. let me read a little bit what you wrote half these projects like the book of boba fett were the victim of a demanding production calendar so this slowdown should 
hopefully produce higher value product at the end of the day. You know, there was reports even where Favreau was like jumping on planes, like not even there on set than he was making all these, you know, it sounds like you, you, you're correct here, man. Yeah. Yeah. No. You and know? so that, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, and that's good. I think for everyone in, in, you know, for the fans, I think it's good for the company. Company, I think mm -hmm. instead of just cranking stuff out, because we, if we remember, they'll be like, we got to get a movie out every, you know, we got to get a TV show every three TV shows out every a year. year. And we have, right. Uh, you know, and, 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 you know, it was just, it was just this mindless thing. And, and this is, remember, Miss Kennedy comes from the sort of the Hollywood studio system where, mm -hmm. you know, you just set dates and you release them and it's going to be as good as it's going to be. Right. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's very hard to shift a date, especially for a big tentpole movie, because then you have to rejigger your schedule, your competitors then respond. You know, that's why people set movie releases several years in advance, right? And so you've got a set date and her mindset comes from that. Her yeah. mindset doesn't come from, I've got all these resources and a lot of time, right? Her but it's so weird. Let me, let me just, let me just interject really quick. It's so weird because it, it's almost like the last three and a half years. It's like, were you not part of the original Star Wars magic? Were you not there? Did you not know that you have to go away every couple of years and create a new script, a new vision, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Did she not learn that from, from Lucas? No, I mean, she did not. 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 No, she, she did not, not learn that from Lucas. She did not learn that from Lucas. And, you know, I think we've seen the real, I think, the, you know, the, the product speaks for itself. None of this is. Very little of this is in line with George Lucas's vision. I think. I think you know, Rogue, uh, you know, Rogue One was in line with George Lucas's vision. I think John Favreau was able to do a lot of stuff in line with it, but that's not her, right? right. Whenever she gets, whenever she gets her fingers involved, it goes, it goes wildly astray, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, as we saw with this, with this silly acolyte thing that came and went, and you know, uh, you know, it's wow. you know, that was all her baby. That was all her wow. baby. It was all her baby, right? And we, we saw the end result when you just give her something that nobody else is involved in, right? Yeah. You know, sort of thing. this is what you get, right? Which is even even the ma mass media is like, this is garbage. Even Forbes is like, this is garbage. I mean, it's not, when you can't even get the mass media, which you should have under your thumb to support it, you know, it is what it is. And it came and went and, you know, and, and it's gone. So let's, let, yeah, let's read ahead. the ending here. So with everything mm -hmm. here appears to be part of a smart focus strategy by Favreau rather than the haphazard make it up as you go along method methodology of KK. I totally agree. These are the actions of someone who is thinking a decade ahead, which mm -hmm. strongly suggests that the future of Star Wars is in good hands. What are your thoughts? What do you think slowing down TV and film production while ramping up games is the right move at the right time? Great, great question here. And the fact that thinking a decade ahead, he's thinking of this generation of, of fans and the next generation of fans. You have to, man. You have well, to. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and let me actually, because it, it, the question raised something I haven't talked about yet, but it's in the article. So the other aspect of it, which is that, you know, slowing down the film and television production, but he's but apparently the, the focus is not ramping up the games, right? Uh, you know, we right. have an Indiana Jane, uh, Jones game that's coming yeah, I'm out. I'm sorry, but did we skip that? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. we skip that. So, yeah. um, so why don't you read that out loud, that section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's read that. And talk, in, in regards to uh, gaming, like, what, what, do, what do you mean Lucasfilm and games, okay? The new Indiana Jones game, if it goes well, could see a sort of resurrection of Lucasfilm games through uh, working with designers other than EA to make games. The discussion right now focuses on getting 10 new games produced by 10 different quasi-indie studios with very limited scope uh, licenses and see who handles it best. And then recruiting them to produce increasingly wider scope games similar to the Star Wars Vision shorts. People like the Vision shorts. Yep. I mean, and so, yeah. So, I mean, and, and, and I enjoyed it. I watched them and they were, uh, uh, you know, so it's, uh, so yeah. So that's, I mean, that's the thing is they're going to try this method, which is like, all right, let's farm out a bunch of, you know, very specific licensed game ideas to, mm -hmm. ten, you know, 10 or so different smaller studios like they did with Star Wars Visions. They farmed it out to a bunch of different animation studios to try things, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in general, vast majority of them ended up creating some very good stuff. And it was all broad range of stuff, right? It, 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 but what it is, is they're going back to free market economics. I know you're going to talk a little bit about politics today. We're going back to free oh, market yeah. economics. Let's get some competition in here, right? Let's not just give EA or uh, you know a couple of uh, different major uh, you know uh, game companies the monopoly on this let's get some young hungry people who want to make their mark on it come up with interesting ideas who are desperate for success and let's give them that again that is the thinking of an entrepreneur which mm -hmm. is what john favreau is john favreau is an artist 
all of us, screenwriters, directors, actors, producers, are entrepreneurs. We have to create from scratch. You know, you, your partner is an actress. She has to create from scratch. She's given material, but she has to create it, right? She has to do the actor's work of creating the backstory and all that preparation work, right? That's And you live your life day to day, project to project. That's what an entrepreneur does. Someone like Miss Kennedy, who is yeah, technically a producer, she's really a studio executive. She's lived a comfortable life of, you know, not really having much risk. Her life has not been one of risk, right? She has been in the shadow of, of great risk takers like George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, who've shepherded her along. She's had a very successful producer husband who's shepherded her along, you know, Frank Marshall. And she's essentially like this person who's going from one safe project to another safe project, getting a credit, right? You know, not being put into a situation of risk and losing everything and losing her legacy. So what has she done? She's been given Star Wars. She's screwed up somebody else's legacy because she's never been in a situation of having to fear losing something. All artists and entrepreneurs do, right? And that's what Mr. Favreau is an entrepreneur. He's an artist. He's a producer. He's an actor, right? He's a director. He's though he's an artist and he's an entrepreneur. And so he's thinking, how do I get Star Wars more entrepreneurial and outside of this trapped mindset of mm -hmm. of, of the of the executive mindset that that Ms. Kennedy brought into it? We lost you. We were just talking about the fake Ray movie and the and you know, and Good. now and so I would talk about the I posted about twenty five articles in the past. Uh, year and a half about how about this your, movie is your, not your real Patreon, correct yeah yeah on my patreon about how stephen denight essentially used this some people ask about stephen denight in the comments this gentleman you know he used this he he was a big feature guy 20 years ago you got an oscar nomination right uh and then he sort of fell out of it he became a game show guy like he uh, you know i think he created who wants to be a millionaire so he, interesting career journey and then he comes back in tv it's peaky blinder so he becomes a tv guy again but he wanted to become a movie he was an oscar nominee he wanted to become a movie guy again so this was a way for him to get involved in a project and then make a big announcement and you know which worked, which is now got he's got a feature career now. You know, and other movies are moving, but this Ray movie doesn't, right? Because it's not real, you know. And so finally, after eighteen months of enduring disrespect, nonsense from people in this YouTube world who have no sources but pretend they do, finally, suddenly, a narrative has begun in the last ten days that there is no Ray movie, that the script doesn't work, that there's, oh, I've been saying that for a year and a half. I've been, I've talked about the different drafts of the script that my people inside Lucasfilm actually saw and said none of them are working, right? I mean, I've, I've, I've announced all this on my Patreon. And the sad truth is, and I'm going to say this because, Paul, you're one of the very few YouTubers that still wants me on because people didn't like hearing this stuff. Mm. They didn't like hearing this stuff last year because it went against the official narrative. When all the YouTubers started an official narrative that John Favreau had quit, I was saying, no, my people saying he's still got a parking. He's coming in. He's coming to the office. He's working. What are they talking about? People didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it because it was become a narrative, an echo chamber, right? That was making the money. And so they stopped having me on because they didn't want someone who's constantly contradicting what everyone else is saying, right? And then suddenly in January of this year, John Favreau is making announcements about the Mandalorian Grogu movie. I thought this guy quit six months ago. Our friend Yellow Flash said he quit six months before. Everyone else went with it. But suddenly he's making, and no one, did anyone correct themselves? Not one of them did. Not one of them corrected themselves because they don't care about you. They're making money whether they spout, spout nonsense to you or not. Pauly is one of the few people that actually cares. If he makes a mistake, he corrects it because he's actually trying to create a channel of integrity. None of those guys want me on anymore. And now all of them are spouting, well, I guess the Ray movie might not be happening. And I had to endure 18 months of yeah. garbage from these people. So some of you are coming from different channels. Those channels don't want me on anymore. Why don't you ask the creators why they don't want me anymore? Because they're giving bad information to you. They're giving bad information to you. And somebody who actually works in the industry, who's telling them that's not what's happening, they don't want him on anymore. And it's, so it's, obviously it upsets me. That's why I'm talking about it. Because now that's this is good. That's good. I, I, oh, no, it's good. It's good. I, I just want to.